this case we're going to Florence, beautiful church of Santa Maria Novella, one of the few Gothic churches in the city. Happen to catch a little organ practice. Fresco is painted by Ghirlandaio. Be sure to go behind the altar so you can see these masterpieces of the early Renaissance. Florence at night becomes a slightly different city, like all towns are transformed in this magical time of day. Strolling past the great Duomo Cathedral on the main street of the city. There's still a lot of traffic, uh, yet the shops have closed by now, so there's only the cafes open and some restaurants. People are heading out to dinner or going back to their hotel rooms. But there's always a nice view of the Duomo in the background when you're in Florence. Oh, walking by the Duomo at night is a divine experience in Florence. It's cooler than during the daytime and the lighting is soft and pink and gentle and the crowds have gone away, the day trippers have gone home. So it's really a nice time to be out walking in the city. In the evening, our group got together for a delicious meal on the rooftop garden of our hotel in Florence. This is the Grand Hotel Balioni. And the restaurant is open to the public as well. So even if you're not a guest at the hotel, you can okay, eat on can the rooftop go. garden, but you have to reserve well in advance. It's a very popular spot. And the next morning, we dig into an elaborate breakfast buffet at the Grand Hotel Balioni. With an outstanding view, we go back up on the same rooftop garden that we had dinner at the night before. Then you can take your coffee out here or just stroll around and <laughs> enjoy this amazing view of the Duomo. Seven in the morning, the bells are ringing. Great place for a photo opportunity. Continuing our explorations of Florence, we're going into the Pitti Palace, which is one of the truly great art museums, although it's often overlooked. People tend to just go to the Uffizi Gallery when they go to Florence, which is a beautiful museum. But don't miss the Pitti Palace. Look at this elaborate display of paintings in the setting of a Renaissance palace with painted ceiling murals by Pietro da Cortona. These galleries are relatively small. You could go through comfortably in an hour and enjoy the works of many old masters, including Raphael, Velazquez, Caracci, Botticelli, Rubens, and more paintings on the wall by Pietro da Cortona. A fabulous display. And there are some statues in here, including the Venus by Canova. Behind the Pitti Palace, you'll find the Boboli Gardens, and out front, more fascinating streets for walking. Well, we're off on a walk to see David. We're going to the Academia Museum and have a look at this great work of Renaissance art. This market has got all kinds of stuff for sale, huh? Shirts, leather goods, wallets, handbags, belts, jackets of all kinds, dungarees, t-shirts. You can do a little bargaining out here with these merchants. They're hungry for a sale. You can chop them down maybe 20-30%. This is all around the market of San Lorenzo. Walking around on these uh, back streets can be a little disorienting if you don't know where you're going, but uh, it's easy enough to get there. We're walking in these little out of the way back streets to get away from the tourists, get away from the mobs and find our way basically heading in the right direction. And you don't even need a map to get around because it's so close, it's only about four blocks away to get from one side of town to the other practically, so it's easy enough. Many people would say that the statue of David by Michelangelo is the most beautiful piece of sculpture in the history of art. So you've got to come to Florence and see for yourself. There's also a copy of David in the Piazza della Signoria, which is the main square of town, right in front of the old city hall, the Palazzo Vecchio, or Palazzo della Signoria. 
And there's the Loji out front. This is a great gathering spot in the city today. You'll enjoy the statue of Neptune carved by Amanati, a giant hunk of white marble. And there are numerous other original statues by great sculptors out here in the piazza. There's also a number of fine cafes. You can just sit back and have a drink, do some people watching, get some ice cream, go inside the Church of Orson Michel, a Gothic church. Walk along the main street of the city here. It's for pedestrians only, and it's lined with expensive shops and terrific ice cream. Two-fisted there. Must be hungry. Real Italian gelato is softer and creamier than American ice cream. We always seem to serve our ice cream too cold and too hard in this country. You've got to wait a few minutes for it to melt, but who's got the patience for that? Time to leave. We've enjoyed Florence, but we're moving along in this program. We're showing you the highlights of Europe today. Moving from Florence on to Venezia in our first class Eurail service. We're traveling together as a group from Hawaii. And we always photograph our tours with Hawaii Geographic Society and bring them back to you as more programs for World Traveler.